Rag is not dead. Yes. <laughs> So prompt caching is here. It was released earlier this month. It's an amazing tool, but tell me, you know, what prompt caching is, why it's great, but also why it didn't kill a rag. So prompt caching, you know, um, Anthropic just released it uh, earlier this month in August, and I call it an API life optimization. Yeah. Um, you know, you have like, when you're chatting with the chatbot, you're building up the context uh, with all of these messages you're sending back and forth, and you may have, you know, some references in there as well, like maybe a book or maybe some some other kind of article that you're chatting against. And it's actually quite wasteful to keep resending that over and over yeah. again for every for every message that you send, because that's what happens, right? You you send an API request, process it, it comes back. So prompt caching is put simply, if you ask Claude to cache something, and that something could be a message, yeah. it could be a tool definition, yeah. which agents use all the time, mm -hmm. then Claude will have I basically an in memory cache of it for up to five minutes and your subsequent message will benefit from that in terms of cost and yeah. latency. So how it works is you will spend 25% more per input token. So instead of like $3, be maybe 3.75 just to have your first request that's cash. Yeah. And they do have a minimum. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're, if it exceeds like, I think a thousand tokens or something like that you can cache it. And then once it's cached, your subsequent request that hits the cache. Yeah is only going to cost you 30 cents and it's going to be up to 90% faster. So if you have any sort of volume at all, it makes sense to, yes. to cash here, right? Yes. Okay. So then the next question, when to cash, what to use RAG for, how do these things work together? Right. right. So think of caching like um, a regular DB you have, right? Like um, in the web, we frequently use index DB. Yep. And then index DB did not cache everything that yep. the server had. Yeah it only cached the pieces that the client received, right? So if you have like a catalog of stuff stored in CMS, you're downloading a small portion of that, you can cache that for a limited lifetime just for performance reasons, yeah. right? And for cost reasons, you don't mm -hmm. want to keep calling the server every single time. So that's exactly what prompt caching is meant to do as well. Yeah. Like um, the five minute window is only meant to serve, to be refreshed every time a request is hit. Yeah. It's meant to serve, let's say an app that has hundreds, if not thousands of users where you can meaningfully increase um, the quality of your response by reducing the time it takes to get to the user. Yeah. Like we've seen in the web where, you know, we went from, let's say, three seconds to two seconds in page load time led to a 70% increase in conversion. Yeah. And this is bringing that thing to the world of um, AI and chatbots. But the reason why it doesn't beat out RAG and the reason why RAG is still relevant is because you have much larger databases out there. Like we're working with enterprises who have hundreds of thousands of lines of stuff, mm -hmm. be it text, documentation, memos, yeah. even code. Yeah. Right. And then you're not going to send all of that at once to the chatbot. Yeah. The chatbot can't even understand that. Like yeah. Claude's context window is just 200 K tokens. Yeah. Right. So um, it, it is not wise to assume that RAG is outdated. Yes, if you're chatting with a book that fits within the context window of Claude, yeah, you might as well not use RAG anymore. Absolutely, go ahead and use form caching. But when for, you have for like the twenty people that use it for talking to a <laughs> yeah, book, yeah, 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 yeah. exactly, pretty minimal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you're a big enterprise, you have all this data. Uh, you only want to look up pieces of the data yeah. when you get a request, and then you will use prompt caching anyway. So, what's a, a real winning strategy for you is use RAG and prompt caching and all of the other stuff that the model providers will put out in response to this. Yeah, it's so interesting. So many people have been comparing these models to different forms of technology to try to have a metaphor in their brain. I've heard, oh, it's a new user interface, which I, you know, it unlocks a new user interface, but it's not a new user interface. Right. The acquired guys on the Microsoft episode said, the models are like a new computer. And yes. for me, that's the first time I've seen repeatable parallels across the technology. And so it's like when computers came out and then caching was a huge part of it. Yes. If you look at that parallel now, you look at the bows at Anthropic, now they built in caching to the system. And I think we're just gonna continue to see the uh, evolution of the computer match the evolution of the model builders per surrounding products in a yes. way that uh, in retrospect will look obvious, but it's so counterintuitive right yes, now. Yes, absolutely. And that's a great analogy, you know. Yeah. We've, we've always been working with deterministic computers, yeah. computers that do what you tell them. Yeah. Um, the chatbots, yes, they will try to do what you tell them, but they're probabilistic computers. Yes. 
So there is a chance that they'll miss it. There is a chance that they'll get all of it. Yeah. Um, and the art is how do you live with that? How do you work with that? Yeah. And how do you use that to produce like meaningful outcomes? Yeah. Because the trade-off is that a deterministic computer is actually limited by only doing what you can tell it to do. Yeah. Right. So for example, if I want my computer to generate images of cats, I need to know how to code that. Yeah. And I, I, I do not know how to code. A not, cat, quickly, right? Right? Not, yeah. not quickly. <laughs> Long enough time horizon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Take my number time, on that one. <laughs> time that I don't have, yeah. you know. But I can ask Claude or OpenAI, uh, uh, whatever the image models are, like yeah. Dali or, you know, Stable Diffusion, and I can ask them to generate an image of a cat and it'll generate a much better image than I would. Yeah. Um, and it'll do it very quickly. It'll do it in seconds. Yeah. Right? So, and that, the, the beauty of that, it is learning from patterns. Yeah. Unlike learning from being told what to do. Yeah. Um, which is kind of an advantage here. Yeah. So here we have caching in the world of LLMs. So talk to me about prompt caching as it relates to agentic workflows. So agentic workflows are by nature like going to lead to slower consumer experiences yes. because there is a lot of latency in what is going on in the system. Yes. And so to have a product that is user facing using agentic workflow is a very hard problem. Yes. Uh, so yes. how does prompt caching fit in here? Yes. So if you think of um, the agentic workflow, right? the agentic workflow is basically multiple agents working together to complete a task. And each agent is an LLM and they have like access to tools, yep. right? So they're enhanced models. So when you're sending a request, to do something with an agentic workflow, it has to go all the way to the server mm -hmm. and then bounce off each agent. And then they might there, there might be intermediate responses that are discarded mm -hmm. for quality reasons, right? Because of the probability factor that we said. Because let's say the probability factor is 65% that the model is able to get your input right, then each subsequent step deteriorates by 65%. And that is why you need a gating quality, you know control yeah. to make sure that the final response is what you actually asked it. Yeah. So it will do a lot more than you would expect from a deterministic computer, just because there are so many agents, there's so much intelligence yeah. working on your back and call, but it is an art. You need yeah. to optimize that. So what prompt caching does in this particular scenario is that agents have tool definitions, agents have instructions, agents have context, which could be, you know, references, could be documentation, could be code repos, whatnot. None of that is going to change. Yeah. Over, over, over that interaction and over subsequent interaction, yep. right? So um, there will be some stuff that changes and you don't want to catch that. Yep. It's, but it's easy enough to you, for you to isolate what will change and what will not. Yep. And that's what makes this useful, yep. right? So when you have all of these subsequent iterations going on, you will abstract away the cost of having to reprocess all those tokens just because you now have them cached in a life memory store that's fast enough to really optimize the time it takes mm -hmm. and you're paying less in terms of cost yeah. because you're not sending all that data around you're retrieving it from a constant source yeah so that's why in an agentic workflow which is constrained by time to do all of that yeah you have faster response time and lower cost it's a win-win yeah and even just in a single chat interface prompt caching is driving down cost it's increasing performance yes. and i have experienced it in Notion AI. So we use Notion in our company yes. and Notion AI lets me chat and ask any questions about what's going on. And it is noticeably faster for me uh, to answer my questions. So yes. like that is a deployed version of prompt caching that probably every startup founder can check out immediately and you'll experience the speed and Notion's probably experiencing the uh, cost savings yes. good for their bottom line. Yes, uh, hope they pass some of that to us. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great if we can <laughs> yeah. get some more uh, free credits from yeah. Notion if you're out there, we yeah. would appreciate it. Uh, yep. What are the other products that are going to you know, greatly benefit from Palm Caching? Yeah, so I think um, the, one of the greatest benefits is these small scale products that yeah. let's say chat with the book, chat with um, some article, yeah. you know, embedded uh, chatbots within a product ecosystem, like let's say maybe the Wall Street Journal has let's say a, a chatbot that chats over their yeah, stuff, right? Yeah, or yeah. you have a chatbot embedded into Ever, Evernote and that kind of stuff. Um, they're going to benefit because the as you're making you know subsequent prompts, yeah. you're always chatting within the context of the same information. Yeah. It's a constant database and you will have you know multiple back and forth messages that you will be sending. 
and you will keep retriggering the five minute window and yeah. then you do that. Yeah, yeah. So that's great. That's going to work. Uh, but even apart from that, you know, uh, what I what I believe is going to happen is in response to this from Anthropic, we're going to see OpenAI. We hope so. Yeah. And uh, maybe even Google Gemini. Yeah. Put out features, um, similar features that make sense. Yeah. And it's kind of it kind of takes me back to the world where uh, where we had iOS and Android yeah. um, competing against each other, you know, adding features. Back when that was a competition. Back when that was a competition, yeah. you know, but um, the the result of that was that customers win. Yeah. So it's an exciting time to be building in this yeah. space because you have an arsenal of tools and strategies and techniques available for yeah. you to build the best possible product for the user. Yeah, and here the customers are. Everybody that's not a model provider, yes. which is cool. It's the it's the enterprises, it's the small businesses, yep. it's the individual end consumers, it's the individual users. So uh, it's all all boats uh, rise with the intense in R and D investments from Meta, from Microsoft, from Google. So yep. it's uh, an amazing time. It's sort of like when. Uh, Uber was super cheap and it's like really like who is funding your super cheap taxi ride? It was like Benchmark, right? Like Benchmark was like uh, yeah. everyone's source of source of, uh, of taxi. Now it's like the uh, the big the big four are the like source of compute uh, for all of us out here in a way that's like probably unscalable be cheap right now. Ho hopefully Moore's Law continues to take the cost down, but yep. it is an awesome time to be an application builder. So, yeah. Cool. Where should folks uh, go to learn more about prompt caching and where should they go to learn more about us? Well, prompt caching, that's on Claude's website. Yeah. Um, Google prompt caching and you'll get it. But go to blitzy.com to learn about us. Yeah. Go to our YouTube channel to see the other episodes we've done on Blitzy Bytes. And we have a ton of other interesting content with interviews with industry leaders on topics that matter to builders and founders and uh, the leaders making the decisions at big enterprises on adopting AI and you know building with it. Awesome. Thanks, brother. Thanks.